Sinong sa inyo rito yung you're happy that it's Sunday, you can worship God? Come on, taas niyo yung kamay. You're happy you're here, nagdamit ka, suot mo yung pamburol mo and all. So, <coughs> tulad ko, okay? Mga pandiin lang to eh. Namalengke ko kanina sa Nepak Humor. So, might as well, sabi ko, pumorma na rin na makatawad ng malaki sa tindahan. But, if you're happy it's Sunday because you can worship God, let me ask this question. Sino malungkot dahil Monday bukas? Ayan, ah, balik na lang naman sa trabaho, ayan, pupunta sa kung saan saan, magkapaparlor bago pumunta sa office, makikibaka sa LRT yung iba, makikipagsiksikan sa FX. Yeah, we're happy because it's Sunday, but when Monday comes, there's something about Monday that we dread the thought of coming to work. That's why we're having this series, para sa inyo po ito. Instead of saying, thank God, it's Friday, Dahil we have this mindset na, ay salamat, marirelease na naman ako sa trabaho. We're gonna call this series, Thank God, It's Monday. Sabihin nyo nga lahat, Thank God, It's Monday. Okay? You hate the waking up early in the morning because puyat ka nung TV series na pinanood mo nung Sunday hanggang alas stress mo tinapos siyang walking dead. And here you are, you're gonna go to office early morning, hirap na hirap ka. Just the thought na pipila ka sa LRT na hindi mo alam kung sira or hindi. So some of you are thinking that work is a burden, okay? You're thinking that, ito, balik na naman ako sa mali, at na-cubicle ko sa call center. And you're thinking this work that God has given me, parang it's a necessary evil. Kailangan lang kasi magka-college na anak ko, kailangan ko magtrabaho. So I, 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 I talked to Pastor Dennis Isleta, he mentions yung mga retiring generals, most often, madalas sinasabi lang po mga nag salamat, makakapahinga na ako na matagal ngayon. And not only the generals, but also those people na mag, mag may speech, merong uh, 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 parang, parang ano tawag doon, yung farewell party, ay salamat, makakapahinga na rin ako. Or maybe may mga anak kayo na gumraduate, sabihin nyo, ay na to, natapos ka rin dyan sa suma, su, sumang puntaong ka sa kolehiyo, o nag magna, magna nine years ka na natapos mo rin, I can rest now. Diba? We, we see it as, as a necessary evil. Now, when I say work, it doesn't mean you nagtatrabaho lang sa labas. You may be a housewife and it's a work. And some of your students, don't check out on me. If you're a student, that's the work at hand right now in this season of your life. So we are working. But did you know that 80% of employees are dissatisfied with their jobs according to research done in America? Wow, 80%, that's huge. They see us work as a necessary evil, as a burden. And in fact, some people think, you may, you may alam sa Biblia, that work was part of a curse. They try to quote this Genesis 3, verse 23. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out, talking about Adam, from the Garden of Eden to work the ground. So, yeah, tina mo. Curse yan. Kasi, hindi sila sumunod kay Lord. Now, it's a curse. They have to work. So, they're thinking that they use this verse to see that, to, 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 parang, to justify that really work is a burden. Now, some of you uh, can't relate to me because you're saying, Jeff, ako hindi. I... I love the idea of coming to work. 6 a.m. pa lang ako, gusto ko nang pumasok dahil ayoko mahalang naging bunganga ng misis ko or something. Or, or, or some of you, listen up, I'm talking to some here. Some of you, you see your work as a God. Wow, with fireworks and all, okay? You worship your job. You look at your job as your ultimate, remember, I use the word ultimate, as your ultimate source of provision. You look at your bosses as kung wala yung boss na to, paano na ako? You look at your job as your provi- pro- provider. Some people will kill, steal, and destroy just to maintain the job. Some people at all costs, mandadaya. We're talking about some politicians. Papatay sa karibal na, na politiko para ma-maintain yung job niya. Are you, are you listening? Some people naman will do everything. They will sleep with their boss para ma-promote sa trabaho. They, 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 they made their job their idols. Workaholic yan. Kahit baha. <clears throat> Papasok yan. Ah, nasaan ka na? Boss, on the way na ako. Wait lang, okay? Baha na. Eh, mga taga-kaintaya. Kami yan, okay? Say, Pastor, diyan pagka babaha, pumapasok ka? Hindi naman. Hindi mo mabaha sa kainta. Ganyan lang. Oh, ganyan lang. Bubong na, okay? <laughs> so, if you're a workaholic here, yung hindi ka mapakali sa bahay, sa bahay, nag email ka pa, nag facebook ka pa, I'm talking to two people here. Hindi, joke lang, okay? Yung talagang, you dread the idea magbakasyon. Ayaw mo na magbakasyon. Kasi baka, baka, in, in yung trabaho. Paano na yung mga iiwanan ko? Listen up, look up here. At the altar of success, we've sacrificed precious relationships. At the altar of position, we've sacrificed meaningful relationship with our spouse. 
with our children, with people who's very close to us, supposed to be, and we have this uh, uh, justification para sa kanila naman to. Really? You see, Bronnie Ware, she is a palliative care nurse, I think, in, in, in Australia. You know what a palliative care nurse is? Yung po'y nag-aalaga ng mga mamamatay na. So, for example, a terminally ill cancer patient, six weeks ka na lang, dadalim po sa clinic nila or a palliative care. So, pag mamamatay na, she, she thought of a brilliant uh, plan. Tatanungin ko, ano ang regret ng mga mamamatay na? So now, after talking to thousands of people who's dying, kanya, mamatay na. Oh, ngayon, mamatay ka na. Anong regret mo? Uh, ano? Sumagot ka. Okay, hindi naman ganun. Ako lang yun. Ako yun, okay? And then brilliantly, she wrote a book on top five regrets of the dying. Wow, don't you? Hindi nyo bang gusto malaman ano yung regret ng dying? Di ba? Malay nyo, kailan sa mulot. Let's joke lang, okay? So, number one, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself. Not the life others expected of me. So they're saying, ang number one regret ng mga mamamatay, I wish I'd lived a life na hindi ako nagwe-wear na maraming mask to please other people. Pero yun, mas, mas gusto ko yung pangalawa dahil para sa inyo lahat to. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Sa mga workaholic. Kasi yung mga tamad, buti na lang, tama ginagawa ko. Hindi rin, okay? Babalance ko yan mamaya. So sa mga workaholic, listen, this came from every male patient that I nursed. They miss their children's youth. Wow. Your daughter will never be five years old again. So if you're missing those PTAs, you're missing those birthday parties for the sake of success. You're trying to, change, to save the world, but you're losing your family. I wish I didn't work so hard. That's what I want you na, ma, na, na hindi ma-experience. That's what we don't want to experience. That's why we're having this series, to balance everything. Now, there's a far greater problem with this regret. Because here, you lose your, your family member here on earth. But what if what you lose is your relationship with God? In Mark 8, 36, it says, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Yeah, you become the COO, the CEO, the president of your company. But in doing so, na compromise ka ng faith mo. In doing so, ang dahil mong illegal na ginagawa. In doing so, ang dahil mong pinapatay na tao. In doing so, ang dahil mong kinuhang mga ari-ari na hindi dapat sa inyo. But because you're powerful and you have the, the, the connection, what's good for you to gain the whole world and then go to hell? That's why for the next three weeks na natitira, wag kang mawawala because the goal of this series is that at the end of this series, we will understand that work is a blessing. Everybody say blessing. Yes. That work is a blessing from God Okay, it's not from you, it's from God and can be enjoyed by reflecting on God's character and nature. It's from God, whether you're a housewife, doing homeschool, whether you're an engineer, you're an architect, you're a call center, you're a janitor, you're a security guard. It's not a burden and neither to be worshipped as well. That's why it's important to understand that curse, that work was never part of a curse. I'll give you the verse that says it's a blessing in Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man. This is the first time he fashioned Adam. The first time he molded Adam and breathed life to him. Here's what's the first instruction to Adam. The Lord God put the man, uh, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and care of it. Wow. It's interesting to note from this very passage that the work was the first, the very first responsibility given to man. Wow! Hindi sinabi ni God nung pagkakrik kay Adam, Adam, medyo nahirapan kaya ta sa pagkrik kayo matulog ka muna. Or kumain ka muna dyan, Adam. Or, Adam, ano gusto mo? Whatever, may rocking chair dyan, mag -rocking. No! The first responsibility given to the created man was to work. That's why we're gonna have this series, that you need to work that thank God I'm blessed, it's Monday. So today, we're going to talk about the God who works in the first week. Next week, we're going to talk about the work that works, what's, what, the, what's, what kind of work that will work. And then next, next week, we're going to talk about the type of man that works, ano yung quality. Kaya don't miss this trip, please lang. Kung may tamad kang asawa, papuntahin mo rito, idrag mo araw-araw, okay? Linggo-linggo. So the man that works, and if you want to tweet this and post this on Facebook, use hashtag TGI Monday Series. Why do we want to enjoy our job? Because according to study, you're going to spend 90,000 of your hours in your lifetime 
working. Imagine, more than half of your life you're going to spend working in an office. More than half of your life you're going to spend working. If you're a full-time mom, whole life more, okay? But if you're an office worker here, an average person will spend 90,000 hours at work over his or her lifetime, according to Business Insider. Wow, average pa yon. Eh kung hindi ka average. Well, what's my point? If you're going to spend half of your life working, you might as well learn how to enjoy it. Tama po ba? Otherwise, you're going to spend half of your, ta- half of your life. <sighs> Umaga na naman. You, you drag your feet papunta sa shower. Parang ah, ayaw mo maligo. Dala nang yung malamig, di ba? Bagay, unang buhos lang na may malamig. So, yung unang buhos tapon mo, okay? So, ah. The God who works. We're going to talk about the God who works, Okay? Hindi ba ka-relate yung iba, walang tabo, okay? Sa amin kasi, sa amin tabo kasi, okay? The God who works, and we're gonna look at three things about God. The God was the first worker. He is the first worker. He is the finest worker. And also, He is the finisher worker. So tatlo lang po pag uusapan natin all throughout this preaching about these three characteristics of God when it comes to working. Let's talk about first that God was the first worker. In Genesis 1.1, it says, uh, In the beginning... Look at this verse. Okay, I want you to focus on this word. In the beginning. Sa simula. Okay? If you open your Bible, the very first book, Genesis, the very first chapter, which is 1, and the very first verse is 1, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, look at what's happening here. God created. In the beginning, God is already working. God created the heavens and the earth. God wants you to know that when you open that Bible, when you open that book, the first Bible, the first book, the first chapter, the first verse, the first words, the first sentence, you'll see that God is working. He's never a bum. He's not a freeloader God. And some people will tell me, Jeff, okay, okay lang tamad, hindi naman pagod. Okay lang, sige, bahala ka. Di bali lang tamad, hindi naman pagod, okay? Starbucks pa, di ba? Big time, Okay. Alin yung problema sa Filipino mindset? Because ang sikat na karakter sa atin, lalo na yung panahon ni Rico Wong, ay si Juan Tamad, okay? Parang yan yung nakalakan natin, na si Juan Tamad na kahit ga, hinihintay malaglag yung mansanas. And we've lived up to those mentality. Na ang mga Pilipino tamad, and not only that, we were influenced by the Spaniards, mahilig sila sa siesta. Pagka may gagawin pa, tulog muna tayo hapon, mainit. No wonder, pagpunta mo sa mga government offices, alauna na, alas dos na, nagme-makeup pa yung mga ano, kakagising lang. Alas dos na, Thea, ah, break time namin, okay? May yosi break pa. But then, you see, to work, because our God is working, and let me tell you something, we're created in the image and likeness of God. So if God is working, if God worked, hindi ba dapat tayo rin? In fact, it's a command in Exodus 20, verse 9. Six days you shall labor. Hindi man ako buntis, Ibang labor yan, okay? Six days you shall labor and do all. Hindi some, hindi few, but do all your work. Listen up. We have to work, not, because, not just because it's a command, but because we bear the image and likeness of God. That our God is never a petics God. You know what happened pag petics ka? Alam petics? Yung idol. You know what happened pag hindi mo ginagawa what you're supposed to be doing? I'll give you an example. In 2 Samuel 2, 11, 1, sabi rito, in the spring of the year, so, spring of the year, this is the time of David, the time when kings go out to battle, there's something to be done. There's a job at hand, there's a task at hand for kings, and that is to, ano, to go out to battle. Look at what David did. David sent Job. May pinadala sa si Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. Listen up. Tingnan nyo to. But David remained at Jerusalem. When he's supposed to be doing something, he's doing nothing. When he's supposed to be fighting for God, he stayed in the comfort of his palace. Look up here. When dads should be working, when dads should be providing for their children, when husbands should be providing for their wives, Nando sila sa bahay. Nag-Facebook. You see what idleness can do to you? Five minutes of idleness, kaya-kaya kang kainin ni Satan ng buhay. Just five minutes of idleness is what Satan needs. 
pag nagpop up sa screen yung pornography and because your your mind is idle, you have nothing to do, then suddenly your mind will be polluted. You're open to anything. In fact, according to Matthew Henry, idleness gives great advantage to the tempter. Standing waters gather filth. Alam niyo yung mga stagnant water? Yung mga stagnant water, dun po yung pinamamahayan ng lamok pag hindi gumagalaw. Iba po yung rest. Ha? Rest is different from, from idleness. Idleness is doing nothing when you should be doing something. So if you're the father of the house, you're the husband in the house, our role is to provide. So if you're doing nothing, believe me, when you're supposed to be doing nothing, lando ka sa bahay at you're in the comfort of your house. Some of you, listen up here, I'm not pertaining to anybody, but if you're, if you're that person, mama's boy ka. You're provided. I have, I have some people in my small group like that before. And, and it's like, bro, you have to go out of your house. You have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to leave your parents because that's commanded in the Bible. A man will leave his father and mother. As long as you're at nana and tatay, mo, you can never leave your family because there can never be two kings in one palace. Because the reality is, he who pays the bill calls the shot. That's how simple that is. Sino nagbabayad ng meralco, tubig at yung bahay, yung amortization, o a milyar, he's the king. So kung nakikitira ka sa magulang mo, et, 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 pastor, okay naman, practical, it's never practical. I'm so blessed, I shared this last, uh, last night in, in the Saturday service. <laughs> it's a good thing my mother-in-law uh, uh, is not here today. Okay? So, kahapon kasi nandun, hindi ako makabomba. Eh. Pag kayo makakabomba ako, okay. I've been married for 19 years. And in the early part of my uh, marriage, we, we, we lived sa mother's house, mother-in-law's house ko for like two months. Ang sarap kasi, yung, yung uh, condo unit nila nasa penthouse. So top floor, may gym, may pool. So nag-enjoy ako. Siyempre, okay, patay gutom, tapos nakatira ka bigla sa condo, di ba? Sarap dito. I kind of like this place, sabi ko sa wife ko, okay? Di yun mga isang buwan na kami, enjoy na kami. Sabi nung biyan ako, oh, eh, bagong kasal kayo, naghahanap pa kayo ng bahay. Opo, oh, mami, naghahanap po kami ng bahay. May guest room sila, ginagamit namin. So lahat ng gift, sa kasal, nandun lahat. So, i-enjoy na ako two months na. Sabi ko, ah, honey, okay, kaya yung parents mo, palabasin natin sa bahay na to. Sila lumabas, okay? Tayo, maghanap, tayo sila yung maghanap ng bahay. Parang nagugustuhan ko na rito, eh, okay? But then, I'm thankful because my mother-in-law, my, my parent-in-law, push us out. Ay, you have to look for a place. Hindi kayo pwedeng habang buhay dito, Jeff. And I'm so thankful after being married for 19 years, I wouldn't be the man that I am right now in terms of providing for my family, the character, the perseverance that I incurred during those trying times na hindi ako makabayad ng apartment na 5,000. When I lose my job, I have to do everything. I became a salesman ng lahat, pati puneraria, lahat, barrel, lahat na binenta ko, fly over sa EDSA, tinatry kong ibenta. And wala na ako mahanap ng trabaho. I have to sell isaw and toknen. Would you believe? Yung porn ako na to, nagtinda ako na isaw. Oh, shucks. Pumipila ako sa Nepak Umart. 3 a.m. in the morning. Papitingka ka ako ng mga pang isaw, dalawang kilo. Ay, wala akong isaw din, dalawang kilo. By the bulk, huri to, 10 kilos. Ha? Hanap ako ng kasamahan ko para makabuo kami ng 10 kilos. Seriously. Because yung maid namin, of course, Pilipino, kahit mahirap, may maid. Okay, so may kasambahay kami, marunong magawa ng adobong isaw. And also, I'm, I'm selling isaw, I'm selling those Adidas for like six months just to feed my family. And I have to go. Kailangan mo magutom, pare. Para malaman mo, you need to work. Pag ikaw sinusustain ka na in-laws mo, they're not good parents. Walang mabibuild na muscle. Unang-unang muscle to trust God and faith to believe God for provision. Yung tuhod ko na pudpud kada dasal. Nasanla namin lahat ng alas namin from wedding ring. This is a new wedding ring. Because we have to trust God. Because those, trial, those trying times produces in me perseverance. And while you persevere, it produces in you character. And those character will give you hope. So some of you are hopeless. Because you don't have any character. And some of you have no character because you don't persevere. Some of you don't persevere because the times of trials, which is preeminent lagi yung trials, ayaw mo ng trials. Shortcut, illegal way, the best way. Makitira sa biyanan. Ba't ba ako umaten dito? <laughs> so guys, when, when we're idle, we're not practicing the faith to trust God and to believe why the super rich aren't leaving much of their fortunes to their kids? From Bill Gates to Warren Buffet, lahat po yan. 
They're not gonna leave the whole in rent. 76 billion kay Bill Gates, hindi niya iiwan sa anak niya. You know why? Because hindi na, ma, hindi na ma, 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 yung creative juices sa anak niya, kung we, ala na, magiging eat, drink, and be merry na lang. The reason why is because hindi po nila, kung iiwanan nila sa anak nila, hindi magtatrabaho. Magiging patabaing baboy. Because 76 billion is 76 billion, hindi ka, hindi, hindi ka na kailangan magtrabaho. But Bill Gates wants their children para ma, ma, mapiga yung creative juices and you can be the man and the woman that God has called you to be. That's why the, the, if you're here today and you're, you're an idle person, you better work. Because Satan is always at the door trying to tempt you. And if you're not busy doing anything, pornography is at the door. Believe me. It's just knocking. It's just one click away. Hindi mo kailangan hanapin. It will pop up on your screen. So Jesus, God was the first worker. And that's only the first worker. Lipat na tayo. Ay, nakahinga na iba. <sighs> He's also the finest worker. The earth was without form and void. Look at how God works, okay? The earth that was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth, of the waters. And God said, by mere words, that's how, that's how powerful God is, from nothing into something. Imagine for a moment, tayo lang, di ba? From nothing, God has brought us to this place. Into something. From mere words, okay? God is the finest worker. Let's look at the work schedule of God. And day one, He created the heavens and the earth, the light and darkness. On day two lang naman, ah, makakreate nga ng heaven, okay? In day three, He created day, dry land, seas, vegetation, the sun, the moon, and the stars on day four. On day five, all the living creatures in waters, birds in the air. On day six, He created land, animals, and people. Imagine, God is a busy God. And He's the finest worker. And not only that, seven times he mentioned good, but then when he, after all the creation, he saw man, and God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. God was a, is a finest worker. We can see the excellence and the grandeur of the work of God as we look at creation. We just sang it a while ago. If you look at the Hubble scope, po, yung mga nakukuha ng Hubble scope, yung telescope na Hubble, this photo po talaga magnificent, that God is a finest architect. He designed the whole universe. Kung gaano kaganda, the magnificence of the whole universe. Pag nakita natin, this, this next photo was, was actually, uh, this, this shows a very small region of the cluster, Omega Centauri, okay? Which holds around 10 million stars. And that's just one speck of the whole galaxy and Milky Way. And, Mabu blown away ka about the creation of God. Now, why God had to do it? But hindi na lang, bigyan na lang ng isang star, yun na lang yung sun ng mga earth, okay na yun. Why? Because God is showing you, I am an extravagant God. Na pag may problema ka sa Meralco, I created the whole universe. Hello, hindi pa nga mabilang ng mga scientists up until now. And if you look at creation from, 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 from the Niagara Falls to to, to those, to those uh, magnificent places on earth, pagpunta mo sa Boraca, yung sunset, parang hand-paint ni God. Because God is not just a, a, a finest architect, He's also a painter. He's a builder. And if you look at Palawan, di ba, yung, yung ating pong cave, the one of the wonders of the earth, wow! You see just how God created something into nothing, into something. Do you have any idea how many species butterflies have? 18,000 different species of butterfly. But but kung wapas siya na 18,000 na butterfly. Any idea how many species of birds? 10,500 species of birds. Sa lahat si Twitty na lang para cute, di ba? Then may one bird na lang tayo. Di masaya ang buhay. Kilang pa niya magkreta ng 10,500 species of birds. Wow. Sino may ilis abulak lak dito? Any idea how many species of orchids? 25,500, 26 rather, 26,567 species pa lang ng orchids. Just to show you, our God has a, 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 is so magnificent in building. He's an extravagant God. He's a finest worker. Let me talk to you, let me talk to you about attention to details. Anybody aware ng beetle na to? Hindi siya sa lagubang, okay? <laughs> this beetle is what we call Bombardier beetle, okay? The Bombardier beetle has twin exhaust tube 
at his tail. Okay, pag tiningnan niyo po ito, those two green tubes contain two powerful chemicals that cannot be uh, 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 para mixed. So inside that small beetle, there's two powerful chemicals, the hydrogen peroxide and the hydroquinone. Now, what's the point, Pastor Jeff? Well, when it's mixed together, it's powerful, okay? It, it, it releases a boiling point uh, kind of uh, 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 emission, a gas that is hot, noxious gases with a loud pop. pop. When he's threatened by an enemy, what he does, pinubuga niya yon. Kahit palaka, hindi siya malapitan. Now, how in the world, a small beetle, God will put two different uh, kind of chemicals that is when mix is dangerous, but inside the belly, they're not mixed. How, how, how did he do that? Just to show you that God is has attention to details. Yan yung hindi maintindihan ng mga uh, evolutionists. You know, evolutionists, diba? they're, they're saying, no God, that everything evolved. That this beetle cannot evolve because every functioning part has to be there the moment it's created. Hindi pa pwede may hydroquinone muna, tapos meron muna ng hydrogen peroxide, and then wala pa yung bundot. It cannot be. That's why the evolutionists cannot explain this little tiny Bombardi beetle. Just to show you that God is the finest worker. Let's talk about your human body. The human body comprises of an amalgamation of different systems working together to make a complex organism from, from the digestive system, circulatory system, eh, lahat po ng system, they're working together. Just to show you that God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Tila may katabi mo. Kinrate ni God, kahanga-hanga at katakot-takot. Mag-decide ka, ano siya ron, okay? Pastor, mukhang sa pangalawa, okay? And my soul knows it very well. I remember, <laughs> hindi ka galing sa unggoy. One time, sabi ni Jun Jun, ah, tayo saan ba tayo galing? Eh, siyempre, may pag-evolution si Mandelpin. Ah, anak, galing tayo sa unggoy. Di ba, nakita mo sa, sa zoo nung pinasyal kita, galing tayo sa unggoy. Hindi, tinulong niya, nanay niya, nanay, saan ba tayo galing? Sa unggoy o sa tao? Sa tao. Eh, ba't sabi ni dad, sa unggoy? Ah, okay, yung pamilya niya yun. <laughs> so, if you... <laughs> Kung naman anak, di mo nililinaw, pamilya pala niya pinag-uusapan natin. So, you see, if other, will tell, other people will tell you lies, na pangit ka, na hindi maganda yung ngipin mo, maitim ang batok mo, and all, no, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Because our God is a finest worker. Now, kanina, tinira natin yung one tamad. Dito, yung ugali ng Pinoy, yung pwede na yan. Pwede na yan. Haphazardly done. Mm, okay na yan. My children grew up with this mentality because I learned it from my disciple. Jeff, kung gagawa ka ng project, gastusan mo sa anak mo. Kasi kung project yan, Jeff, tuturo mo sa anak mo, the best. And always excellence will cost you. Kaya ayaw ng tao ng excellence. Kasi magastos, matrabaho. Gusto natin yung easy way. Yung easy, okay. One time, gumawa yung anak ko na parang project that would require parang may itatayong parang building na 3D and all. And we have to go through the whole national bookstore, maghanap ng maliliit ng mga details, details about grass and lawn and all. Magastos. Pero I told my daughter, yes, because excellence is costly. Now, hindi naman yung extravagance na talagang over-over sa gastos, but, but I'm just balancing this that you have to be an excellent worker. If you're doing it the first time, do it right the first time. Yung pentalidad ng Pinoy, pwede na yan. Kaya no wonder yung airport natin, laging world's worst airport, nalalaglag yung kisame, tumutulo tubig, y y yung pong reblocking sa EDSA, butas-butas na naman. After two months, nakaka-reblock lang sa EDSA, butas na naman. Because this mentality na pwede na yan. That's why we need men and women sa politics or sa government. That's why we need men and women in the workplace who have integrity and who have character and will work like God, that He is a finest worker. Do you see a man skillful at his work? He will stand before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Kaya po yung mga excellent na tao, yun yung nag-excel. Yung mga excellent na worker, kung ikaw ay empleyado na, wala, nakaganyan ka lang, ha, eh, ito lang naman, sweldo ko rito eh. Now, listen up. If you're that person na pa-jump from one job to another, wala kang, wala kang direksyon. May call center dito ng in-offer. Uy, 20,000 per month. O tapos biglang, three months pa lang, merong nag-offer na 22,000 naman. Lipat ka, lipat ka ng lipat. Wala kang na-accomplish. 
Not only today, if you're here today and you're a man or a woman who lacks excellence, I hope this church is an example to you. This building has been here for the past 10 years. Rarely makita mo mapanghiyo si Art. Very rarely na mer walang tissue yung lalagyan. Wala kang makita busted light dito. Because the whole idea is, how can you expect people to entrust their busted life if you can't even fix your busted light? Isn't it? So kung yung, may isang businessman dito dumating, tatlong linggo na yung ilaw na yun, walang ilaw, kukurap kurap tatlong linggo na ka. So, tas expect mo yung buhay ko, ayusin nyo, yung ilaw nyo, hindi nyo maayos. That's why this building, lahat dito excellent po. The preaching, the praise and worship, it's excellently done. It's being planned. This preaching was planned 18 months ago. That's how we do it here. Because hindi pa pwede yung Sabado. Ano kaya pipreach ko? Kahit ano na lang, ako na lang, Lord, as the, as the Spirit leads. Hindi pa pwede. We have to plan it. Kasi hindi pa pwede, pwede na yan. Hindi pa pwede nakashorts ako rito. Kaya patpamburo ang suot ko. So, sa mga one tamad, sa kasa pwede na yan, that's not the way God works. And then lastly, our God is not just the first worker, He is the finish, finest worker, but also He is the finisher worker. Tingnan natin kung anong karakter naman ng Pilipino ang mahihit na to. And then it says here in Genesis 2.1, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. The heavens and the earth were completed. Okay? He didn't left anything hanging, okay? Hindi niya, hindi niya, <laughs> hindi niya sinabi, ah, bakit parang yung buwan kalahati lang lagi, okay? <laughs> or bakit yung araw kaya parang half lang? Or tipong, hindi ginawa ni God, parang kulang yung oxygen. Imagine kung kinrate ni God, kulang yung oxygen. Lahat tayo, <laughs> <laughs> parang lahat ng tao, ganun mo sumi. <laughs> parang kulang yung oxygen lang yung ni God sa earth, ah. <laughs> Di ba parang ganun, kung mas maraming carbon dioxide. <laughs> Ang weird. Puro sino ka. At wag na natin sabihin. Di ba? Wala siya. Hindi niya iniwan na, ano, na, na kapos. But he did everything with extravagance. More than you'll ever need just to show you I am a provider. I can provide for you. If I created those heavens and the earth na wala namang magkikinabang, just to show you ganito ka nakamahal anak. Kahit to just a speck of dust on earth, ganito ka nakamahal. And then it says here, by, by, the sur- by the seventh day, God had finished the work He had been doing. So on the seventh day, He rested from all His work. Not because He is tired, because God is never tired, He's n- He never grow weary, but because He wants to enjoy His creation. Some of you, some mga workaholic, te, pag nasa bahay ka na, wag ka na mag-check ng email. Pag nasa bahay ka na, wag ka na mag-check ng Facebook. Kausapin mo yung asawa mo na whole day nandiyan sa bahay. O kuya, pag nasa bahay ka na, huwag ka na mag-check ng mga Instagram kung ilan nag-like sa picture mo. Hello, pinost mo, pintuan. Ano mo, sino mag-like noon? The door. The door. Kutusang kita dyan eh. Wala ka sense-sense ang post mo. Speak, talk to your child. Alam mo, yung bata, si Junjun, bata, mami, mami, look at my drawing. Yung nanay, busy, yung Facebook, Facebook. Ay, kit naman. Mami, look at my, ay, kit ng dinosaur anak ah. Mam, ikaw to eh. <laughs> Dinrowing kita na eh. Dinosaur? Baka dinosaur tingin sa inanin mo dahil extinct ka talaga, hindi ka makita. Listen up. Tingin kayo rito. Hindi po yaya. Hindi yaya ang solusyon sa absence nyo. At lalo hindi iPad. Some parents here, para masustain po yung mga anak na nasa tabi nila, bibigyan ng iPad. Okay, mag-iPad ka dyan, mag-Facebook ako. That's the worst parenting. In London, in UK, yun po yung growing business ngayon sa mga doktor, therapy sa mga bata, ng mga screen agers, puro screen ng kaharap. They lack the enthusiasm, wala silang uh, uh, gratitude, they, they, they lack the, the delaying gratification. They want immediate gratification because sa iPad, I don't like. Next, uh, pangit. Next, uh, bura, delete, new download, ang bilis. So sa reality, ina-apply din nila. Pagkain nila yung pagkain, palitan to. Pagkain nila yung, yung tao, palitan niya. Pagkain, lahat, ina-apply nila sa lahat. Pag nakasawa yun, ayoko sa'yo, alis ka dyan, okay. 
Ano yung address na to? Kung wang tamad at pwede na yan, ito yung mga ningas kogon. You're a jack of all trade, but the master of none. Kung katulad nyo ako, noon, nagigitara kasi ako eh. I, I love playing guitar. Pero puro ko intro. Ang tawag nga sa akin, intro boys eh. Ang kaya ko lang intro, saka chorus. Pagka sumunod na, wala na, hindi ko na alam. Or chorus lang madalas alam ko, hindi ko alam yung gitna at dulo. So if you're a ningas kugon, alam niyo ningas kugon? You started something and you're, you're not able to finish it. Ang dami mo sinimulan. Nagsimula ka sa networking na to, and then nakakuha kang downline, kumita kang konti, lilipat ka naman sa networking na sinisiraan mo nung nandun ka. Tapos sabi mo, oo oh, nga, pangit pala yung kumpanya na yun, narecruit pa naman kita, pero ngayon, ito na yung the best. Ha? Tapos lilipat ka naman sa kapila, networking, lili- wala kang na-accomplish. Lilipat ka sa isang kumpanya, lilipat ka dito sa isang uh, uh, real estate company, lilipat ka sa kabila, and then ang dami mo ng binenta, nalilito na yung customer. Hindi pa sabi mo, pangit yung ganitong kumpanya, bakit ngayon? Ay, hindi pa na-realize ko talaga, pangit yung paswerdo nila. Hilong-hilo sa yung kliyente mo. Ang nangyari, tumanda ka lang, wala ka na-accomplish. And I pity those people na if this is you, I, I don't mean to, to na ikaw to, no? nakakasabay ko minsan sa jeep, sa LRT, 70 plus years old na may mga dalapang mga brown envelope, mga networking, insurance. If you happen to reach the age na katulad ni Rico Wong, na 50 plus, dapat consultant ka na lang katulad niya. Because this man invested so much on his strength, kaya pagtanda mo, consultant ka na lang. People will look out for you. Babayaran ka per hour. Kasi nga, you've mastered the one gifting that you have and just, just focus on it. Ang daming tao gusto lahat strength niya. Nasa sales, nandito sa, sa marketing, nandito ngayon sa HR. Inikot mo lahat, tumanda ka lang, wala ka na-accomplish. Ningas kogon. But if you stick long enough, there will be trials. If you persevere long enough, it will build in your character and eventually you're a man or woman of hope. Kaya ngayon, tanda mo, hopeless ka. Nangingi ka pa rin ng pangga sa anak mo. Pag sira ang gulong ng auto mo, hingi ka pala sa anak mo. You're, so, you're supposed to be the one blessing your children. In fact, the Bible says, a righteous man lives an inheritance to his children's children. Hanggang apo. Sino sa inyo rito, may minana kayo sa lolo nyo? Aside sa hika, pulmonya, arthritis. You know, normally yung minamana sa lolo eh. Well, God bless you kung may minana ka pera sa uh, kayamana sa lolo mo. Pero don't you just wish na, dream na, apo, Ito para sa ito. So the God who works is the first worker. He is the finest worker. And also, He is the finisher worker. As I end on this, I can't tell but really look at the work of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ worked. Okay? When He was born, He was never born in a, in a, in a kingship. He was never born under king and again prince and then He just calls the shot. He was born in a poor family of a carpenter. He was a carpenter. He's working. And tingnan mo yung naging impact ng buhay ni Jesus Christ. If you look at Israel, it's just a seven-hour drive from north to south. Seven hours. Ang po ng Israel, ha? okay? Okay? And, and from, I think from east to west, it's like a four-hour drive. So, how come Jesus Christ, in a span of three years, working in, in the calling that God has called him to be, how come he impacts the world so much that there are around 3 billion Christians nowadays? How come he impacts the world so much that we're talking about his life 2,000 years ago up until now? How come you dress up every morning and want to hear about Jesus? How come millions of songs were written about Jesus? How come Jesus is the book that talks about Jesus? It's, the, uh, it's always been the best-selling book of all time, reprinted over and over again to many different languages. How come Jesus Christ, three years of working in this very tiny place called Israel, na hindi pa niya nalibot in the first place, ng buong, buong Israel, how come he impacted so much? May secret siya when working. And that's what we want to know ngayon as we end. Sabi ni Jesus, my father is always at his work to this very day. Yes, God rested from his creation, but he never rested. Ultimately, he's working. Because if hindi siya mag-work, hindi tayo babubuha. He sustains the universe. And then sabi nito, and I too am working. So when Jesus came on earth, hindi siya bum. Hindi siya yung freeloader. Hindi siya yung anak ako ni God. Pakainin niyo ako. No, no, no. You know why he managed to do that? Effectively, number one, he works with meaning. Yung trabaho niya may meaning. 
Yung trabaho niya merong, 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 ano tawag ng meaning? Merong, may katuturan. It says here in John 5.30, By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself but Him who sent me. The reason why God's work is meaning, Jesus' work is meaning, because His meaning is to glorify God, to please God. Now listen up. If you're a bank teller, or if you're in a call center, whatever job you're into right now, parang walang meaning. Ah, kasi ang, ang work mo is parang pera-pera lang to, kailangan ko lang sumueldo, kailangan ko lang. It's a burden. But if you look kung trabaho mo has meaning that you want to glorify God through being a bank teller, then suddenly waking up in the morning every Monday is not a drudgery. Because your life has a meaning, you want to wake up every Monday because there's another opportunity for me to accomplish the next part of Jesus' uh, 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 mindset on work, that He has a mission. May mission po siya. Not only His work has meaning on earth while He's here, meron po siyang mission. There's an end in mind. Sabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.18, all this is from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ. So ang mission niya is to reconcile lost people to His Father. So kaya siya bumaba, kaya natatrabawin for three years, Meron akong mission to reconcile this lost, perishing, going to hell people on earth to my Father in heaven. Yun po ang mission niya. Now imagine for a moment. Imagine in your own workplace, you have that mission that people will know Christ. That people will know Christ through my being a bank teller, through my being a call center, through my being an engineer, through my being a housewife, my children will know Christ. Imagine, kung yan ang mission mo, Every time you step into the office, secondary lang yung perang kikitain mo. Secondary lang yung position mo. Because you're, you're replaceable in your position. But once you have a greater mission in your office to reconcile those people to Christ, then suddenly may meaning. Let me give you this illustration. Suppose I, 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 I brought you to this building on the 87th floor. And then sinabi ko sa iyo, lalagyan ko ng ledge, papunta rin sa kabila, tumawid ka. Yung ledge, maliit lang. Parang one foot ledge lang. Without rope and anything. Who among you here, tatawid ka for 1,000 pesos? Tawid ka. For 1 million pesos, tatawid ka ba dyan? Walang rope, walang pole, wala. 1 million? Higher, 100 million pesos, tatawid ka dyan. Hindi pa rin? Okay, last call sa mga tamad. One billion, tatawid ka. What if you saw on the other side, hawak ng kidnapper yung anak mo, nag-iisang anak mo. At kung hindi ka tatawid, iluhulog nila. Would you cross that bridge? I would. You know why? Because suddenly there's a mission. Suddenly life is at stake. Suddenly you realize, hindi lang pala pera-pera. I know people who are filthy rich, but there's no meaning, there's no mission in life. They're gonna try everything, drugs, sex, and then makita nila empty rin. So they're gonna end up empty. Because their work has no meaning, there's work, their work has no mission at all. That's why if you're working here, you dread the idea of going to office, I suggest that you have meaning in your, in your work. I want to glorify God being a, a security guard. I want to glorify God being a COO. I want to glorify God being a janitor. And the mission, my life will be an example. My life, people will see around me. And eventually, they will note Christ. And lastly, Jesus is a method. The method is, I have a beginning and I want to end this. He's a finisher. Stephen Covey said, always begin with an end in mind. Seven habits of highly effective people. Always begin. Ano ba, ano ba talaga yung method na gagawin mo? When Jesus came here on earth doing the work of ministry, He didn't just start it by being born in a manger. He grew up in stature. He worked for three years, 30 years to 33 years of being Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And then lastly, at the cross, He said, when He did receive the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. He finished the work intended for him. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let's all stand on our feet today as we end. You see, if, if, if you're here, I know that's, that's, that's a lot what we learned today. But you see, 
having an understanding that we were created in the image and likeness of God. Work was never a burden. It's, it's a blessing from God. I'm talking about legal works, okay? Next week and the next two weeks, we're going to talk about all those questions. Paano, Pastor, yung ano, trabaho, ganito, illegal. We're going to talk about that. But you see, it's enough for you to understand now, today, that the God Himself who created the whole universe is a worker. Up until now. And He's the finest worker. He's not a, he's not a mediocre, pwede na yan type of worker. He is an excellent worker. And just like Jesus, He finished the work at the cross. You see, He finished the work of redemption. So if you're here today, and para inisip mo, Pastor, it's hard. It's hard to have a mission in my workplace. Hindi godly yung presidente namin. Hindi, hindi Christian. But I believe God will give you the grace. Let's bow down our heads. Let me pray for specific people today. If you're here today, in the workplace, may you challenge ka. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're starting to compromise. I don't know. Maybe some of you here, hirap na hirap ka to stand for what is right, to have meaning and mission in your office. So if you're an employee here, employee lang po, no? And you're challenged to your workplace, and right now you've understood, I have to have meaning, I have to have mission, I have to have a method, and you want to commit your, your work to Christ, that it's a blessing, can you just raise your hand? And I, we're, we'll pray for you to give you the strength and the boldness and the courage to stand for what is right in the workplace. Father, you see these men and women, Lord, God, raising their hands. They're working. They're blessed to have a work. But Father, I know, Lord God, this world has its own mold. This world has its own pattern. And Lord, sometimes they're so consumed to earn money. They're so inundated with a lot of worldly patterns, Lord God. I pray that they will see beyond the, 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 the financial side of working. That they will see that I have a purpose in this company. God has called me in this company. That I'll be the salt and the light in this company. So Lord, would you just bless them? Bless them, Father. Give them the courage and the grace to speak for what is right. To stand on the Word of God. And do not hesitate, Lord God, to speak your Word. To care for people. To love them the way you have loved people, Lord God. So Lord, bless these employees in the name of Jesus. Amen. Next, people, if you're a businessman or a businesswoman, you're, you're running your own business, you're an entrepreneur, whether big or small, can you raise your hand? Let me pray for you. We need more of you. Father, we, you look at these people, Lord God, you have given them the ability to produce wealth. They're helping the economy. They're helping people, Lord God, to have jobs. But Father, I pray, Lord God, more than any, anyone, Lord God, in this room, sila Panginoon yung nakikita, may mga tao silang hinahawakan. So, Father, I pray that they will be role models. That they will pray, even pray, Lord God, before the start of the day. And, and they, will, they will show their employee, we have to trust God before we do anything else. And as Christians, Lord God, it's, it's incumbent for them to do the right thing regarding taxes, regarding handling people, regarding uh, 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 values and, and, and integrity in the workplace. So, Father, help these, help these people, Lord God, who's leading their own companies. Bless them, Father, as you have blessed uh, uh, Abraham, as you have blessed um, Isaac and Jacob, Lord God, with their businesses. Lord, bless these people as well. You can bow down your, uh, you can put down your heads. If you're here today, you're looking for a job. Come on now, wala kang trabaho. Newly graduate ka or whatever reason, you're looking for a job. Let's believe by faith. Tayo po rito. Magkakapatid ho tayo lahat dito sa Panginoon. I believe God wants to bless you. God, I believe God don't, doesn't want you to be idle. Huwag ka mag-isip na masyadong big time. Hindi, Pastor, kung hindi kikita ng ganito, no, 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 no. Be faithful with the little. If you do more than you're being paid for, eventually you will, will be paid, paid more than you, you're doing. So if you're here today, masyado kang big time mag-isip, hindi million ang kita, no, stop doing that. Start small. Magkaroon kang trabaho ngayon. Kung wala kang trabaho bukas, magkaroon kang trabaho, yun ang trabaho mo. Okay, may trabaho ka na bukas. Raise your hand if you're looking for a job. Come on, huwag ka mahiya. Okay? Lord, you see these men and women, Lord God, raising their hands. Father, I pray. You have called them, Lord God, for greatness. You said in your word, Lord God, that I, I will bless the works of your hands. That you're never the tail. You'll always be the head. And Father, thank you, Lord God, because you have called them, Lord God, for greatness. You'll give them creative ideas. You will give them, Lord God, creative minds. That people will say, but hindi ko naisip yan. 
Oh, nga pwede naman pala negosyo. I don't know what it is, but Lord, would you just touch their hearts today? That first things first, they have to really lay down everything to you. Lord, give them the work that they have called them to be, the talent, the gift things. Hindi yung kumita yung kabila, pupunta ron. Kumikita yung isang Christian na ganun, papasok ka. No, no, no. Lord, give them to uh, the idea, ano ba yung calling nila, ano ba yung passion nila, ano ba yung wirings nila. What's their gift things and talents? And they'll capitalize on it. So, Father, thank you for these men and women, Lord God, who's gonna have job this month, Lord God. We're believing, Lord, by faith. You're gonna bless these people, Lord God, with work so that they'll be able to provide for their families. Because as you said in your word, those people who cannot provide in their families is worse than an unbeliever. So, Father, give them the grace to have job, to have work, so that they can have a sense of meaning, mission, and eventually accomplish as Lord God the method that you're given them in the workplace. So, Father, bless each and every one of us. We thank you for this message, Lord God. We pray that it will permeate our hearts, thereby giving us a changed life as well. We honor you today in the name of Jesus. Amen.